A major NXT departure has been revealed. Plus, we're going to talk about a major in-ring debut for AEW. That and so much more right here on The Ango Show. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Ango Show. We're going to kick things off with the AEW in-ring debut, and that is because Sasha Banks, now known as Mercedes Monet, is expected to wrestle for AEW, but the interesting part is when. Now, for those who don't know, there was a tweet that went out last night, and Mercedes basically responded to the question, when are you fighting? And she simply said, double or nothing. Now, this is a very interesting choice because Double or Nothing doesn't take place until Memorial Day weekend in the United States. That's not until late May 2024. Now, today, it is April 10th, 2010, and AEW is building towards AEW Dynasty, and I'm actually really curious as to why they're not having her wrestle beforehand. I don't know how you could spend all of this money on a big free agent and then save them to wrestle on your weekly television product at a time period where you are trying to attract new viewers, at a time period where there is a lot of talk about the drama in your company and not the product, and at a time where the women's division is truly gaining momentum, why not use this as an opportunity to help build up that division? Now, I get it. Mercedes Monet will probably be on TV doing commentary, having backstage segments, and trust me, that is all good, and I'm glad that she'll be involved on television. But to me, I just could not fathom the idea of spending all of this money on somebody just to save them for the double or nothing pay-per-view. Now, we know last week on Dynamite, Mercedes Monet did say she is coming for the TBS championship at double or nothing. Now, this is really interesting because Mercedes Monet has not done anything to gain a championship opportunity at double or nothing. Now, of course, people are going to think I'm complaining or micro uh, analyzing this, but that's not really the case. I understand the TBS and TNT championships could be open challenge, but there has not been any indication that the champion is doing the open challenge here. So I think there is a major flaw in that type of presentation on TV. I'm a huge fan of Mercedes Monet. I want to see her being booked well. I want to see Mer- I want to see Mercedes being booked as champion. I don't care how they go about it, um, but I want to see that. And and I think for for AEW, they got to be careful about doing this slippery slope with their mid-card belts because these mid-card belts are soon to be booked better than their actual uh, counter titles, which I think that is a problem. But nonetheless, Mercedes is going to be wrestling at double or nothing if you're going to Vegas Definitely going to want to tune into that. Um, I'm thinking about going to Double or Nothing this year. I went to the very first one. I absolutely loved it. I want to go back. Let me know what you guys think. Ladies and gentlemen, WWE has a brand new state-of-the-art, large-ass new studio. I don't even know what to explain this or how to call this or what it is because WWE is so damn insane. Uh, WWE is investing its technology in a big way as the company has now opened a new multi-studio purpose uh, complex that is 30,000 square feet in size called the studios at WWE. Now, there is a website called Sports Video Group, and they put out this article on this incredible facility. And guys, I I really don't know how to explain what WWE is doing here because WWE, you know, they don't need to, they don't really need a major studio like this. But of course, uh, they're they're going for it. Um, Really, the big thing that you guys need to know with WWE's new facility is that they are really, really all in on production technologies. Um, WWE actually has this philosophy that they believe by utilizing technology properly, they could actually enhance its production quality and then tell more dynamic stories. Uh, That's really insane. So... I mean, this this studio has dressing rooms, office space, green rooms, post audio suites, uh, production control rooms. There is so much that they have going on. Green screen, LED video walls. Um, you know, they they really got it. They really got it going here. Um, and, and I and I find this to be a very interesting decision because. 
This is located in Connecticut. For WWE, you know, when when you think of a production company, just a normal production company, you think of Hollywood and you think of LA, right? And then you think of, well, hey, you could do everything remotely, which is true. Then I think of WWE and I think, okay, you have the performance center for training. Now you have a production suite for pretty much everything that involves production. Then in addition to that, you have your headquarters. Now I'm starting to realize what WWE's play truly is. WWE's playbook is actually quite simple. They are trying to cover 1000% of the grounds that they are walking on. Meaning that when WWE is putting forward a product for Netflix, yeah, there might be some Netflix involvement, but for the most part, WWE 1000% will be hands-on from the production aspect of their show. And the fact that they could do it remotely is even better. Then I think of WWE and what they're really trying to do, and that is the fact that WWE, obviously, you know, WWE, AEW, TNA, you're, when you're producing your show, you're going to have different cameras, different things like that. But WWE looks to be using this production facility as a way to actually alter the way that their product is viewed. And, um, you know, if you get really creative, it could be really, really good. If you get really, really creative, it could also be really, really bad. So I, I want to see how WWE goes about this. I'm really excited about them having new studio capabilities. They definitely didn't need higher production. Their production is already so good. But WWE going into Netflix, new TV deals, it makes a lot of sense that they want to be all hands on deck. And, um, you know, Joe Solari, uh, he is the WWE VP of Studio Operations. He says, uh, you know, having, having these new capabilities has everybody excited, and that is so massive. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring to you guys attention. WWE's Braun Breaker is leaving NXT and it looks like he is, in fact, going up to the main roster. WWE did drop a digital exclusive of him and Braun Breaker thanking everybody last night after the show. Um, Corey Brennan from Fightful Select has reported that Braun Breaker is leaving NXT. Last night was his final night in NXT, and he is, in fact, moving up to the main roster. Also, very interestingly, in that same report, WWE has the pitch of keeping Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin together on the main roster. And I actually want to say this because I genuinely mean this, and I cannot believe I'm saying this because I did not think it was going to work in NXT. But Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin has been so awesome to watch together in NXT that I actually do want to see them on the main roster to start. Braun Breaker is going to be a massive, massive character for WWE for many years to come. And the reality is, if you have Braun Breaker on TV just squashing people all the time, then guess what? You're getting another Ryback-style push. And that's been done so many freaking times in WWE. Why not do this differently? Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin work. You don't have to rush Braun Breaker's greatness, but this allows him to be a big part of the team. It allows him to be big part of SmackDown. And in addition to that, they've legitimately gotten over as a great tag team, which I can't even believe. I can't believe it because they just didn't seem like they would be compatible together, and they absolutely dominated in NXT. I want to see them tag team on SmackDown, help enhance that tag team division, make it fun, and you know what? I really look forward to seeing what happens here but uh, congratulations to Braun Breaker. He stayed in NXT for a very long time. Absolutely dominated from 2.0 to 3.0. Just a really cool experience watching him. And, uh, you know, man, one of the big things back in the day, my concern was, hey, you get called up to NXT, you get ruined. And, and uh, you know, this new regime does not, they don't give me that same, uh, that same self-doubt or whatever. So very, very cool. Very excited. Braun Breaker gone from NXT and maybe even Baron Corbin. We'll see you guys next time right here on The Ango Show.